Hello everyone, my name is Bo Alexander and I'm so glad that you're here. You all have been thoroughly enjoying my thrift hauls these past few weeks and I wanted to switch it up just a bit and venture outside of my comfort zone in this week's upload. We have quite a few extremely large antique malls and vintage shops in my area, I'm talking like 100 plus booths at each, and I thought it would be cool to do some exploring and see what kind of home decor accessories and furniture they have to offer. I know so many of you appreciate mid-century modern, minimalist, and art deco style design and in today's video we'll be scouring these stores high and low for unique and eclectic pieces. I'm keeping an open mind, I'm not really looking for anything in particular, but I wanted to bring you all along in hopes of continuing to inspire you to source unbelievable finds on the secondhand market. So stick around to see what's in store. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe down below. Leave me a comment, chat with me, and give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you're enjoying my channel and the content that I put out weekly. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Botox Now. I post pretty frequently and that's where you'll find more of my home decor and styling inspiration. Now without further ado, let's jump right into it. It's been quite a few years since I've been antiquing and I've never been since I moved here to the East Coast. We actually have a couple of antique malls and cities nearby and I thought it would be cool to see what type of home decor ideas and inspiration they had to offer. Now the first piece that I noticed was this beautiful gilded mirror. I actually have this mirror you guys. This is the same piece I found on Facebook Marketplace and upcycled in a video a few months back. I love this gold color, they actually had it selling here for $150, I only paid $50 so a third of that, but had I not purchased it when I did, I would have definitely bought it here as I saw the same mirror selling for well over $500 online. If you've followed me for some time, you'll know that I like to do my due diligence and I try to uncover the history of any piece that I spotlight. This Replogle World Globe sits atop a clear lucite base. It's actually vintage from the 1970s and recently sold for $350 on firstdibs.com. Here it was selling for $59, which was quite a steal for this modern find. This chrome mirrored coffee table was massive in size and for the $395 they were asking, it was actually pretty reasonable. I couldn't find the same exact piece for reference, but similar styles by Bernhard in this size sell for thousands online. I loved this Art Deco styled compote dish. It's vintage from the early 1930s and made by the brand Tiffin in a black satin glass. Now I imagined using this spiral stemmed bowl to hold clementines or fruits in my kitchen, but I felt the $45 they were asking was a bit steep. Little did I know that was actually a deal as the same piece is selling for double on Etsy. These Art Deco styled bookends are by the Swiss sculptor Oscar Waldman circa 1930 and were in near perfect condition. The lion and lioness themselves were made of bronze and sit atop a beautifully veined marble base. At $225 they were expensive, but each pair I've been able to source online since this antique outing is being auctioned for $1,100 to $1,300. I thought this pair of Lucite candlestick holders was stunning. I love the undulating, wavy silhouette and find it interesting to see how popular Lucite was as a material in mid-century modern and late 20th century design. It's definitely made its comeback and become popular once more today. This set was $90, which in comparison to other vintage pairs I found online, was pretty reasonable. The same could be said of this retro Lucite acrylic lamp. Now, I'd be curious to see if the hard wiring on this piece has lasted all these years, or if it would need to be replaced in order for the lamp to work, but at $12, it wasn't a huge investment to make compared to similar vintage finds. Now I'm sure this decorative starburst mirror was a true mid-century find. This piece was massive and well over 4.5 to 5 feet in diameter. Similar retro finds sell for $600 or more on Cherish.com, but replicas in smaller scale are available for around $100 on sites like Overstock. Each of the antique stores that I visited had hundreds of booths to look at, and I was actually quite surprised to see the variety of pieces that these vendors had curated to sell. The 
this glass cocktail mixer was very similar in style to a picture that I thrifted in last weekend's video. Here it was selling for $36, and I was lucky enough to score mine for $1.75. One of the booths had a large selection of vintage cameras for sale. I thought they were so cool and they were actually pretty inexpensive. I want to say that most were around $30 to $50 a piece. I can't guarantee they actually worked for that price, but for a decorative object it could definitely spruce up any space. These lotus-styled pendants scream mid-century modern, but have actually made their way back into mainstream Nordic and Scandinavian design. Now again, I'm sure this pendant was a true 1970s find, as the tag suggests, but you can purchase the same style brand new from Overstock for $108, nearly half of the $225 it was being sold for here. Now I searched for quite a long time to find similar abstract marble sculptures and could not believe I found one in the same exact style, selling for $685 on Cherish.com. The vendor here wanted $385, so it was half price, and after doing my research, I learned this was an Italian-styled marble sculpture handcrafted in the 1970s. I found dozens of photos online of reclining female nude sculptures, many in the same pose but could not discover who the designer of this particular piece was. It says it's a mid-century modern styled figure, but it definitely had an art deco flair. Large-scale pottery like the stucco textured vase has certainly made a comeback too. At $125, this was an incredible price for this piece as it was nearly 2 feet in height. For only $65, this hand-turned black walnut bowl was a steal. Another mid-century modern stylized piece, and I loved the contrast of its square base and rounded interior. If you know me by now, you'll know that I gravitate towards any type of decorative stone object granite, marble, onyx, alabaster, you name it. This mid-century modern styled onyx base was very inexpensive at $45, especially as I've seen big box stores like HomeGoods and HomeSense sell mass-produced marble bases for a similar price point. For a marble obelisk statue of this size, a price of $145 was right on the money. I found the same object on eBay for $140, so that $5 would guarantee instant gratification of bringing it home same day. I have a couple of stone obelisks myself, one granite and the other onyx, both of which cost me around $25 each. Here were a few more decorative sculptures and statues. The first with the vendor referred to as the Handshake, which was supposedly a museum piece reproduction, though I couldn't find the work of art it was based off of. Same with this figure to its left. It's a loose representation of Eternal Springtime by Rodin, and an affordable one at that as others sell for $325 or more. This is an original Dynalite halogen desk lamp. It's very contemporary in design and more of a retro piece as it's from the late 1980s, but could still be purchased brand new in an array of colors online from retailers like Lamps Plus. I love the extended arm and the silhouette that it casts. It's a very chic piece for only $36. If you saw my thrift haul last week, you'll know I scored a large glass cloche similar to the style here for only 99 cents from Goodwill. Though this was a deal too at only $5, as most sell brand new at stores like Hobby Lobby for well over $15 to $20. This was a vintage Carrera marble utensil holder, but could easily double as a vase or a wine chiller. At $12, it was ridiculously inexpensive compared to others online that retail for upwards of $30 brand new. I really liked the silhouette of this slim ceramic pitcher. I couldn't find this particular piece for a comparison, but found the style in black on Etsy with the same handwritten marking beneath. I found that the piece was sold back in 2016 and was handmade in Holland in the 1950s. Needless to say, the price was warranted for this vase that has remained unscathed for nearly 70 years.
Now I realized this was a marble ashtray made for cigars, but I just thought it was fashioned in such a beautiful shape. I almost wonder if an object like this could be used as a decor item somehow. Similar styles online go for $25, so at $27 it was definitely in the same ballpark. I thought this praying hands figure was beautiful for $6.50, but in my opinion would have looked much better in matte black. I know it could be stained as it's wood, but when it comes to antique and vintage finds, I always have a hard time revamping them as I'm sure someone out there would enjoy them in the original state they were fashioned. Had I not just bought a beautiful Lucite sailboat sculpture last week in my thrift haul, I would have definitely made this purchase. This is a post-war Art Deco styled yacht fashioned in chrome plated brass. It's from the 1950s and was selling for upwards of $109 on Etsy, though it was only 10 here and such a sleek accent. Just above it lived this beautiful mid-century modern style teak lamp. It was on sale for only $80, which was a steal for this Danish find. I saw similar styles on Cherish that have sold for upwards of $560, which is insane if you ask me. This piece was very sculptural and in the right setting would absolutely command attention. I loved this Art Deco style table lamp. It was missing the round circular glass piece that floats behind it to create a subtle glow, but sculpturally she was stunning. From what I researched, a majority of these lamps are found in Europe and for much more than $79. The figure was also named Celia, but I'm unsure as to why, so if you have any information on this piece, let me know below in the comments. These vintage Lucite grape clusters are so beautiful, I've seen them in white and other neutral shades, and my search continues as this color is just a bit too vibrant for my home. At $55, it was very reasonable in comparison to the hundreds that they sell for online. I think I've established my affinity for stone objects by now. These were made of a white colored onyx and technically candle holders but could be used as a vase for a single flower bud too. Onyx pieces resell for crazy amounts online so at $24 for the pair it was definitely a steal. This was another unique space age styled floor lamp. It's actually vintage Ikea from the 1970s and it's designed in the image of a tulip. I saw one selling online for $337, here it was $95 and as I said before, these styles are definitely making a comeback in Nordic and Scandinavian design aesthetics. This is another popular mid-century modern Danish find. It's a Dansk silver crown candle holder and it holds around 12 miniature tapered candles if I'm not mistaken. At $33 it wasn't terribly priced. I actually saw another here that was super tarnished for only $14, so not steep at all in comparison to various online listings. I see a ton of the imperial glass candlewick pieces when I'm out thrifting. I've seen trays, cups, candlestick holders, plates, you name it, and a majority as Depression era. Some newer versions are made as recently as the 1980s, so still vintage but not nearly as desirable. At $15 this pair was unique, especially as the style with the clear glass beads is so timeless. And last but not least is this set of Fosteria glass bookends. A majority of these were actually made between the 1940s and 60s, so the glass is super substantial. I received a similar set for Christmas by Ellie Smith Glass in a video a couple weeks back, and I know a few of you have shared that you've ordered them since, and I totally recommend the purchase if you're in the market. So I definitely have to say that I enjoyed getting out there and seeing what types of pieces are available. Like I said, I haven't really had the opportunity to get out there and antique in quite some time. And although I thought these pieces were incredible, I can say that I've been able to source most, if not all elsewhere on platforms like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and Etsy for a lot less. The last location was definitely the most reasonable. And I have a feeling that you guys are gonna let me know below in the comments which pieces I should go back and buy. So by all means, let me have it. These walkthroughs really helped me open up my mind and my eyes 
space to the different types of pieces that I'd like to eventually start filtering into my space. And I hope that I've continued to inspire you guys to get out there and source on the secondhand market and if nothing more, at least to garner an appreciation for the different types of decor we may overlook. But that is it for this week's video, my friends. Be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know which of the items in this walkthrough were your favorite. Hit the thumbs up button to let me know that you like this video and enjoy this antique outing. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and accompany me on this weekly home decor journey. Follow me on Instagram at Botox now for more day-to-day -day posts and inspiration and be sure to hit that little notification bell so that you won't miss an upcoming video. I hope that you all have an incredible day. Until next time, bye!